Happy Monday out there at Team 42. It's your skipper here, Darius Delta, present our Macro Minute for Monday, August 12th, 2024. As always, we'll start with the executive summary from today's lead-off morning note. If you would like to review the analysis of these conclusions, as well as what specific changes you need to make in your portfolio to stay on the right side of market risk, you need to be a client of 42 Macro. So today's key macro questions are, is the Fed behind the curve or is the curve too far in front of the Fed? And how is the U.S. economy performing? Our answers are U.S. dollar money markets currently see two and a half more rate cuts than the Fed by the end of December of this year and four more rate cuts than the Fed by December of 2025. The former projection is reasonable. The latter projection appears aggressive based on where the U.S. economy likely is in its business cycle. We see U.S. economic surprise risk is generally skewed to the upside over the medium term as the U.S. economy likely avoids recession over that time horizon. We were correct in calling for inflation to surprise the downside in recent months and expect that dynamic may continue throughout Q3. Our model calls for inflation to start trending higher again in the first half of 2025, but that risk is not something asset markets have to price in soon. Transitioning to our 42 Macro dashboard here, as always, we'll wrap up with a question from our community. Uh, This one's regarding our macro weather model. And so the the question reads, uh, hello, Uh, the macro weather model is is using consensus next 12 month uh, inflation and GDP numbers as inputs, but it seems 42 Macro uh, projections are more correct uh, more often, uh, according to the great back test, uh, we're plugging in these 42 macro numbers for inflation and GDP growth result in a better, uh, more optimized uh, weather model. So the answer is probably yes, uh, obviously. So just in terms of how our macro weather model works, uh, for those who may be unfamiliar with our macro weather model, the macro weather model is designed to uh, uh, generate a rolling three month forward projection return projection for the uh, five liquid asset classes here, as you see in the middle of the page there. Uh, um, for clients and how we use the model is to help to assess the probability of regime change over a, a medium to long term uh, time horizon. And so at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is use the uh, change in the different principal components of macro to give us a sense of whether or not we are seeing an, uh, we're seeing an asset, uh, you know, develop, whether we use the different features of in, in the macro weather model. Sorry, sorry, stumbling while I'm trying to pull this up. This is weather model. I, I think I lost it, but that's the there or there. So how the weather model works is it's designed to uh, now cast trends across the various features uh, of the economy uh, the, with respect to the real economy cycles. We have growth, uh, inflation, corporate profits, uh, fiscal policy, uh, and uh, the uh, employment cycle as well. And on the financial economy cycle, we have uh, liquidity, uh, we have credit, we have uh, interest rates, and then we have uh, uh, positioning uh, with respect to um, fear and greed in the marketplace. Uh, the greed components are, are correlate to aggregated positioning in the commodities and equities asset classes, and the uh, fear positioning correlates to uh, aggregated positioning in the U.S. dollar and U.S. treasuries. And so how those features are performing uh, over time gives us a sense of, okay, is the uh, is this a good, you know, kind of a broader macroeconomic environment uh, for risk taking across these various asset classes? And what it's doing is the projections uh, send a regime dispersion pr- a signal into each of those uh, rolling through month four projections so that uh, if you're in condition A for a particular feature, it's suggesting that you should have better than baseline returns or worse than baseline returns uh, for that for that particular asset class. And it does this across each of those five asset class. Each feature contributes independently uh, to the overall uh, determination signal for each asset class. And so, um, you know, we're plugging in our forecasts, which are more accurate than Bloomberg consensus forecasts, which are the median forecasts of all the uh, economists on Wall Street. Our forecast, our model is more accurate than that on both. Uh, growth and inflation for the U.S. economy. And so the question is is a, a good question in the sense that if we use our inflation, our projected inflation deltas, uh, as opposed to the uh, consensus inflation delta projections, uh, would we create a better outcome from the perspective of the macro weather model? The answer is likely yes. Uh, but the reason we won't do that is because we actually want to understand what consensus thinks. It's an important dynamic uh, in terms of understanding, uh, trying to help clients anticipate regime change In asset markets, we need to understand what consensus is expecting to occur over the medium term, because that does have an important influence on the uh, overall performance of asset classes. And more importantly, uh, sometimes more importantly, uh, on the uh, relative performance of different assets and and, and factors within various asset classes. And so it's an important feature from a descriptive standpoint, uh, if if only if only descriptive, but it's not. It's actually those are two of the highest uh, rated features in the actual uh, weather model itself for, for stocks in particular. So uh, we're going to keep the weather model same. Like I say, things ain't, ain't, ain't broke. We don't fix it. And obviously our process uh, isn't broke. Uh, you can count on one hand the number of macro strategists in the world that have had a better track record uh, than we have uh, since we started the firm back in the spring of 2021. We meant no words about that. We haven't been doing a great job keeping our clients on the right side of market risk because our models work 
and the people and the person uh, running the models and communicating the output uh, to our clients uh, does a damn good job, if I do say so myself. So we'll wrap it up there. Uh, everyone have a wonderful day. Best of luck out there. We'll catch you back here tomorrow. Cheers.